Hey, well, welcome to Elijah Streams. I'm Steve Schultz. Along with my wife, we founded the Elijah List 25 years ago this month. Uh, and then Elijah Streams came along a little bit later. Today, I'm so, so, so excited. to. Uh, we're going to bring Roger Stone on in just a minute. The only thing I'm going to tell you about, and I'm going to let him tell his story. Uh, but he's the man, this is the one thing I'll tell you, he's the man that uh, President Trump pardoned. And, of course, that drove the media nuts. And don't you love that? You know, I love it when we drive the media nuts, <laughs> frankly. But he's got quite a story to tell, and including how he found the Lord. And uh, then we're going to actually talk about Robin Bullock is with us. And um, they are they have met. They're friends now. Um, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about even portals. And all three of us will even talk about that as well. So, uh, without further ado, let's bring in Robin Bullock and Roger Stone. Here we go. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> I, I'm working on it. <laughs> you're, you're getting it, man. You're getting <laughs> My it. fingers don't stretch. I told you, get get two rubber bands and put one <laughs> here and one here. <laughs> it's, a, it's not like I haven't played with rubber bands enough. My brother and I used to drive each other nuts, shooting each other in the face. Oh, really. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, Roger Stone is with us. Welcome, Roger. I'm so excited that you and I have met on, on the phone only. You have got quite a story to tell. And, you know, there's a long bio that was sent to me, but uh, we talked about this beforehand. Rather than me read your bio, Roger, just tell your story and take your time. Don't feel like there's any rush. We don't have a time. So tell your full story from the beginning if you want. So um, welcome to the broadcast. Well, first of all, as a fan uh, of Elijah's dreams and also a, a fan of Robin Bullock. Uh, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, you know, I'm Roger Stone. Most people may recognize me from the morning that 29 heavily armed FBI agents stormed my home at 606 in the morning mm. to arrest me for the completely fabricated crime uh, of lying to Congress. I didn't lie to Congress. Uh, I may have made misstatements, but none of them were relevant or material or uh, I hid any underlying crime. I was essentially, because I'm a 42 year friend of Donald J. Trump uh, and political oh. advisor, um, I was charged in the Mueller investigation, the Mueller witch hunt in an effort to pressure me to bear false witness against the president. Uh, I had the high honor of working for President Richard Nixon, 1968, 1972. Wow. During that time, I got to meet the great Billy Graham, one of the greatest men of the 20th century. Uh, I also worked for governor, later President Ronald Reagan uh, in 1976, 1980 and 1984. It was in the 1980 campaign that I met Donald Trump uh, and I became immediately impressed at his, with his independence, uh, his courage, uh, his faith. I actually went to Norman Vincent Peale's church with him uh, there on uh, Fifth Avenue. Wow. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm a hard-boiled political operative. Uh, but when the full weight of the federal government uh, comes down on you, uh, and when you're dealing with a, a deeply biased and hateful judge, uh, crooked prosecutors who withheld exculpatory evidence uh, from my lawyers uh, in a kangaroo court, in a Soviet style show trial, um, you know, it, it is, it's a wrenching, extraordinarily stressful um, experience. I mean, for two years, I was vilified, smeared, threatened, mm -hmm. fronted, gagged. Uh, so I wasn't allowed in any forum whatsoever to defend myself, not on social media, not on a program like this. I was denied my constitutional rights. My first, uh, fourth, and sixth amendment rights were just trampled on, um, essentially bankrupted because being gagged for 16, almost 18 months, I was unable to make a living. I make my living speaking and writing and, uh, and lecturing. Uh, and then uh, I must tell you that despite the fact that I was uh, baptized as a Catholic. Today, I consider myself a non-denominational Christian because I think the Catholic Church has become captive of the globalists. I think wow. it's epically, epically corrupt. Uh, and I found myself going to Mass 
uh, and leaving there depressed. Uh, and all they preached was wokeism. You know, go get your, go get your, you never brought up uh, protecting the unborn. That never came up. Uh, so uh, I, I'm now going to uh, Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, the church formed by Dr. James Kennedy. Uh, church was dedicated by Billy Graham. We've got a great pastor there, Pastor Rob uh, Bashir, who's, who's an amazingly a charismatic uh, advocate for the Lord. Uh, but a time came in this two-year ordeal when I hit rock bottom. Mm. Uh, I realized that I was trapped, that I was not going to get a fair trial, that the charges against me were, were, were highly fabricated. There is no Russian collusion. There was no Russian collusion to lie about. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was depressed. I was angry. I was worried about my wife, who's 73, hard of hearing, uh, as to where she would live, how she would support herself if I was unjustly incarcerated. 68 years old with a history of asthma since I was an infant, mm. uh, looking at being sent to a dank Georgia prison. Uh, and many of my friends uh, who are pastors that I had met, had met, you know, working for Reagan, working for Donald Trump, uh, Pastor Mark Burns, uh, Pastor Rod Parsley, uh, Pastor uh, uh, Leon Benjamin, actually Bishop Leon Benjamin, uh, Pastor Randy Coggins, particularly, is only at that point in his 20s, all urging me to, you know, to take refuge in the Lord. But it wasn't uh, until uh, Randy Coggins, Pastor Coggins, asked me if I wanted to meet Franklin Graham. Uh, because I had met Billy Graham twice. Uh, I'd seen him when I was 12 years old in a tent revival uh, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. My grandmother worked as a domestic in the homes of some very wealthy people in Darien, Connecticut. And the household cook, uh, who was very close to our family, we called her Aunt Ida, even though she wasn't really my my aunt. She She was spiritually. She was a great follower of Billy Graham's Christian crusade. So um, she asked my parents if I could go to the crusade. It was one of the most memorable experiences wow. in our life. I mean, it was 100 degrees. We were in a tent in Bridgeport, Connecticut. When Billy Graham stepped to the podium, he looked like a bronze god himself. Every hair <laughs> in place, immaculately uh, groomed. And by the end of the, of the speech, he was drenched in sweat. His hair was hanging in his face. Uh, but you could feel... You could feel the Holy Spirit at 12 years old. You could you could yeah. feel the presence yeah. of the Holy Spirit. So I jumped at the opportunity to meet uh, Franklin Graham. Uh, he's not his father. He has his own style. He's very effective as a as an apostle for the Lord. Uh, but I, you know, I I was thinking politically. I'm a political operative. So I said, well, Reverend Graham, I know you're a close friend to the president. I'm staring into the abyss here. Uh, they want to put me away for seven to nine years, which is essentially a death sentence at my age. Uh, and I wondered if you might put in a good word for me with the president in terms of clemency. Uh, and he looked at me and he said, well, I'll see what I can do about that. But let me give you a piece of much better advice. Um, are you a religious man, Mr. Stone? I told him that I had been baptized in the Catholic Church and had my first communion in the Catholic Church, uh, got married in the Catholic Church but that I had fallen away. You know, when I became a heavy duty political consultant uh, and a worldly man of the uh, inside the beltway, I had fallen away. In fact, I, I become a libertine. I did a lot of things, uh, you know, that were crazy uh, in my younger days. And he said, he looked me in the eye and he said, look, uh, if you will turn your burden over to Christ, if you will confess your sins, if you will, if you will, if you will pledge to walk in his way, and to avoid the near occasions of sin. Uh, I've known other men in your situation. He said, I absolutely guarantee you that Jesus Christ will never abandon you, that he will never forget you, that he will deliver you from your persecutors. But it, it can't just be words. He said, it has to be sincere. He, it has to be in your heart. But once you are imbued with the Holy Spirit, uh, I think you'll see things very differently. It's okay. Uh, and up until that time, to be honest with you, I was... I was trying. I was reading the Psalms. I was reading the Proverbs. Uh, Randy C Coggins, uh, you know, many years my junior, but but a very effective preacher, very dynamic. Uh, you know, he was on me every day, calling me every day. 
How do you feel today? Are you reading the Bible? Are you feeling, are you feeling his presence? And I still wasn't feeling it. And then uh, Reverend Graham had reserved seats for us at his revival, uh, Boca Raton, Florida, in this field. There must have been close to 2,000 people. Uh, you know, you bring your own beach chair or your own blanket. Could have been a Trump rally with all the MAGA hats and all of the T-shirts. And, of course, thanks to CNN, I'm pretty widely recognized. Uh, but the moment came in his oration uh, when he said, I don't care if your problem is uh, alcohol problems or gambling problems or drug addiction or health problems or financial problems or relationship problems. Uh, I, I don't care what your problem is. The Lord will lift you up. The, the Lord will save you. Uh, the Lord will protect you. Uh, the Lord will never, never abandon you. Uh, and those who want to live forever in his heavenly kingdom and be saved need to stand up now and, and confess your sins. Uh, and at that moment, uh, it felt like the most natural thing in the world. Uh, I wasn't embarrassed. I wasn't sheepish. I stood up with, I don't know, 200 other Christians I confess my sins. I pledge to become a better man, to live, walk in his way. Uh, and I'm going to tell you guys, it, it was like like cement blocks being removed wow. from your shoulder. It was I was a different person. I was no longer angry. I was no longer apprehensive. Uh, this calm came over me, this, this confidence that the Lord would provide. I knew I was going to go through hell. I knew that a trial in D.C. was going to be horrific. I knew that there was no chance... Uh, of a fair trial. Uh, the judge denied every one of our pretrial motions. I was accused essentially of being a Russian asset, but I was not allowed to prove with forensic evidence and expert testimony that there was no Russian collusion in the Trump campaign. Uh, but I went into that trial um, with the support of my wife, who was, you know, the rock uh, in our family when I became despondent. She was the one who said, go read your Bible. She's the one who kept saying, never give up, never give up. Uh, and uh, when I got home that day, she said, what, what came over you? You left here virtually suicidal. And now you, you like, you're like a different person. <laughs> wow. I said, and I said, honey, it's all going to be OK. Uh, and it was. Uh, now, last Thursday or Friday, I was in Salt Lake City. I gave a speech and I told essentially what I've just told you. And I said what I believe. The Lord gave President Donald Trump, my friend of 41 years, the strength and the courage uh, to, uh, to do this extraordinary act of mercy and justice and fairness. And because he knew that I was uh, politically targeted, because he knew I had, in fact, done nothing wrong, because he knew I had been railroaded and not uh, given uh, a fair trial, he first commuted my sentence hours before they were to drag me away. Uh, and then that Christmas, he issued a full and unconditional pardon. Wow. Uh, and when I said that, I was attacked by the Huffington Post. Roger Stone says that, that the Lord saved his life, but his critics doubt it. Well, uh, look, I understand that, that snotty political elites can snicker about God, can snicker about our beliefs, but it really doesn't bother me. And here's why. I don't care what they think. I only care what he thinks. So good, Roger. He, wow. he knows what's in your heart. You can't, you can't fool God. I've learned that. You can't bargain <laughs> with God. Uh, if you want to make God laugh, tell him what your plans are. <laughs> so yeah. true. You're trying it. <laughs> Roger, real quick, there's a photo that I'd seen online where your hands are in the air and you, you appear to be in a meeting. Was that the moment, or is that just a different photo? Is that no, that is, that is the moment uh, in you, a field that I... You that, look on that photo, Roger, like you had been praising the Lord for 30 years, and you were still doing it. That's how it looked to me. So that's how real it was. I just wanted to throw that in. So anyway. I couldn't be in to tell you, literally this juncture, the thousands of people who, when they see me, say, we prayed for you. We prayed for you and your wife. We prayed for We saw it on TV. We saw them storming your home. Uh, we, we've been praying for you. And of course, my answer is, well, the Lord answered your prayers. Uh, so I can't even begin to thank the people who not only prayed for us, but also contributed to my legal defense fund so I could afford the lawyers to try to fight for my life. I could never have done it because I lost my home. 
Uh, I lost my insurance. Uh, I, I lost my ability to make a living. Uh, I had to sell my car. I had to sell my beloved precision bass guitar. Otherwise, I'd, I'd be jamming with, uh, with Robert <laughs> Bullock, who yeah, plays awesome. his guitar. Awesome. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had to kind of start all over again. And then, of course, I was deplatformed. Uh, I, w I was censored, essentially canceled. So I had a million followers on Twitter gone in the blink of an eye. I had uh, uh, 3.5 million followers on Facebook gone. I had 85,000 followers on Instagram banned. Uh, so uh, that had usually been the means by which I'd sold one of the five best selling books I've written. And that money kept my family afloat through this entire ordeal. So it, there's a cautionary tale here as well, because what happened to me can happen to anyone mm. uh, under a brutal authoritarian uh, uh, government. Uh, your right to travel, your right to speak, your right to free association. When I was arrested, they gave me a list of, of people that I was not allowed to talk to under any circumstances or communicate with lest my prohibit my probation be repealed and I'd be immediately incarcerated before trial. And there were people on there who were spiritual advisors. There were people on there who were just good, good friends, people I turned to for advice and solace. So if this can happen to me, uh, it can absolutely happen to anyone. Uh, but there was one other interesting thing here, because you see at this juncture, I had never heard of Kim Clement. I didn't know who that was. Uh, and I found once I declared my allegiance to the Lord and started living a different life, actually becoming a different person, um, I started getting emails and text messages and letters from people telling me about uh, an extraordinary prophecy by Kim Clement uh, in which he talks about the giant being taken down by a simple stone. Yeah, it, he did. It's very <laughs> he powerful. Did. It's a very powerful prophecy in which he says, yeah. you know, the brothers of Goliath for, uh, are standing glee as they say, America falter. We will destroy you. We will crush your credit. Uh, but the Lord shall pick up a simple stone. Remember that name, he said. He did say that. He said, remember that name. Because otherwise, otherwise people would have said, okay, so there's a rock. He threw a rock. Or, but he said, he paused and said, remember that name. So I want to be very clear. I'm not claiming to be a prophet. I'm not claiming to be a, 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 a savior of any kind. But here's what I do know. I think the Lord spared my life for a purpose. Uh, and I don't know what that purpose is because I think it, it, it gets revealed to you over time. When mm -hmm. the Lord is ready for you to know things, you know. Then uh, a very good friend of mine, John Ardwood, who's a great Christian, a great gentleman, a supporter, kind of turned me on to, uh, to Robin Bullock. Almost at the same time, my friend Barry Wunsch was telling me about Robin. Uh, so I started following Robin, and I saw where he said, when the stone is released, the giant will fall. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I, there's, there's something here that the Lord wants me to do. Uh, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it is, although in a way I know, because I think we're in an epic struggle to save our constitutional liberties, particularly yeah. our, our freedom to worship. Mm. This is not like when I started in politics. When I started, we had two political parties. They both were anti-communist. They were both patriotic. Mm -hmm. John Kennedy and Richard Nixon both loved America. Uh, the Democrats wanted to tax a little more and spend a little more. The Republicans want to tax a little less and spend it. But they were both fierce anti-communists. They were they were both patriotic Americans. That's not the case anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I feel today that the struggle in America is not between Republicans and Democrats, but between dark and light, be between good and evil, between the godly and the godless. And I honestly believe if we fail, that America will step off into a thousand years of darkness. Now, when I said that in a speech uh, on January 5th, before an enormous crowd, CNN said, you see, there's proof that he's advocating violence. Uh, no, I have an apocalyptic view of this struggle. That's my, that's my religious belief. Mm -hmm. That's, that's anti-Christian bigotry. Uh, but I, I've never advocated lawlessness or violence. Uh, I don't think that's the answer. I've spent 
40 years in the political vineyards were politics, uh, which is, uh, you know, which is, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty damn good at it, to be mm -hmm. honest. I hear you. Uh, and I pray for victory. There's no question I pray for victory. And sometimes mm -hmm. the Lord rewards you. Uh, sometimes you, you come up short. But the key is not whether you strive and fail. The key is whether you get back up off the mat and get back in the game. And now, in all honesty, despite the horrific financial problems that this has caused me, uh, my wife, uh, shortly after I was pardoned, was diagnosed with very aggressive stage four cancer. Uh, the doctors told us that there was little hope. Uh, I'm convinced that this was completely stress related. PTSD, mm -hmm. two years of unrelenting stress, uh, uh, being, being assaulted in the newspapers and on CNN and MSNBC day in and day out, not being able to respond. I mean, she internalized this because my wife is a, she's a very balanced, uh, very optimistic, very, very upbeat person. She's never smoked. She doesn't, she drinks only wine and, and they're mm -hmm. not much. She eats carefully. She exercises, but, but the mental balance, mm -hmm you know, is extraordinary. So this was a, like a second blow. Uh, I had my freedom. Uh, we talked about if we, if I get out of this, I'd like to travel. Uh, although that's out of the question now without paid security, sadly enough. Mm. Uh, but now I can tell you that, that uh, she rejected the conventional prescription for, for cancer treatment uh, and through the healing power of Jesus Christ and oh, a lot of, all natural remedies. My wife is cancer free today. Awesome. <laughs> I know you and Barry were, uh, stayed in touch through all that because he would tell us that. And by the way, for those watching, we will have Roger back with Barry at another time, so we can he can give his perspective on that. So, but I didn't want to interrupt your flow. What anything else you want to say? So I, I think that that's kind of the background. I mean, I my grandchildren, my great grandchildren. I have a great grandson as well. I'm happy to say they, after this horrific experience, you know, they, they said, came to me and said, well, maybe it's time to retire. Maybe you should just withdraw from the battlefield, write books. I've written five books. Uh, maybe you should kind of dial it back and take it easy. Uh, that's not what, that's not what the Lord wants me to do. Mm. I'm great on it. Uh, I, I get specific, you know, there's sometimes it's in a dream. Sometimes it's just a strong feeling that comes sure. over. Uh, yeah. but, but there's there's no question that God wants me back on the ramparts. He wants me in this fight. Uh, he wants me in this fight because he has something specific uh, he wants me to do. Now, I'm, unlike some, I'm actually very optimistic. And I'll tell you why. Right. I've now read the entire Bible. I know how it comes out in the end. <laughs> wow. Good does triumph in the Bible. In every great battle, the Lord's forces are always overnumbered, but they're always victorious, and he will be victorious again. Our, our nation was founded on Christian principles, uh, and that is precisely what they're trying to erase. Between the, the vile uh, critical race theory, trying to turn Americans against each other, uh, this gender nonsense that they're trying mm -hmm. to push on school children, uh, the Bible is pretty clear. God made Adam and he made Eve. That's it. You know, there is there is no other gender. I'm sorry. Yeah. So so I, I'm, I'm back at it again. Uh, like I said, I was in Salt Lake City uh, helping a congressional candidate there um, and immediately came under attack when I talk about my faith. Uh, it's almost a badge of honor, to be honest with you. Uh, and then specifically, as you know, I wanted to come on uh, and talk about something that I've talked to Robin about uh, because my friend John Arwood made me aware uh, of uh, some of the things that Robin had said and the things that other prophets had said about a very strange, almost supernatural uh, development where uh, there is very clearly, in my opinion, uh, some kind of satanic portal that is right above the White House can be seen day and night yeah and let me and let me set that up roger because what happened is we go back three or four months and then robin i'm going to throw it to you in a second but we uh, three or four months ago i don't think robin had seen this yet and what you're talking about actually presented itself that long ago and the media's not talking about it 
Uh, Robin may have mentioned portals a number of times back then, but then something happened in the visual on a sky cam that was permanently located. And we'll show that in a second. And I said, and I said to Roger, what is this? And we put it on the camera. If it's okay with you, Roger and Robin, let me, let's yes, play sure. that little clip. Cause this is from a sky cam, not our cam. It's one that's permanently mounted, and this was recorded from that three or four months ago. And it's, I don't even know if you've seen this version of it, Roger, uh, but it's pretty amazing there. I'll, I'll set it up for a second. There's a cloud-like reddish thing with blinking lights in it, and you go, what is that? And then there's a moon-like thing. It looks like the moon or the sun behind a haze, and it's neither of those. That moonlight thing remains to this day. Moons, the moon moves. This thing doesn't move. So, so, so uh, I'm going to just have the team play that real quick. So go ahead and and play that, Emily. So this doesn't have sound, but you see that thing. It looks like a sun behind the clouds or the moon. That has been there for months in the sky. Now this is a camera. You see some refractal things as this zooms in you'll see the moon-like thing. It looks like almost the sun. And then you see that red cloudy stuff. And you see the lights within it. And and I, I showed this to Robin on the air. It's literally, I don't know the date we showed it. And wow, look at those flashes. And I said, Robin, is that, what is that? Is that good or evil? And I didn't know. So, Robin, I'm going to throw it to you. What, what, what did you tell me at the time, and what are your thoughts about what both Roger well, and I are saying? Well, you know, this the portal is real. And what happened was, was um, it's amazing that the whole occultic world, Steve, knew that on 2-22-222, a portal was going to open. Now, that's all they talked about. It was, um, uh, they began to talk about it. The occultic world did. They said it was going to open. They, uh, they were going to use this portal and so forth. I, I want to tell you something about that portal that you just saw. If you'll notice, I want you, if you look at it and then you look to the right of it, you'll see all the Go lights. Ahead and play that that. Here. Go ahead and play that while you're talking. Mm -hmm. there. Go ahead and talk. Over see, that. you see the portal and then you see the, all the, the cloudy flashes and all beside yeah. it all of that going on well what it was is is you have to if people start thinking about it like this i remember when when i was uh and it's amazing that roger's on during all this because see the political realm is where the the forces of good and evil come to fight because that's the realm when they come together in that political realm like that it's it's the realm where they they enter into because that's that's the realm that governs the affairs of men, and so there's always a fight of spiritual entities in a political realm. It's always there. It's because whoever controls that controls people, and they control men. Wow. So and they control communities, nations. You know the Prince of Persia is mentioned, and by the way, that's who we've been fighting for a while. Is really? the Prince of Persia. And so, uh, but he fell the other day. Now, uh, maybe we can get into some of that, but I want you to see that the political realm is, ex uh, there's more to that. I mean, that's where forces come, spiritual forces come to fight. Now, uh, on January 6th, now I'm telling something, you know, people getting in trouble for all that, but I, I don't know what you're showing this on, so I'm just going to talk here. <laughs> Let's go for it. This is so, on Rumble. This is on Rumble, okay. so just say whatever you want. Okay. On January 6, um, 2021, you know, I was there at uh, in D.C., and I was listening to President Trump speak. I was up by the monument, Washington Monument, and then the Lord told me, he said, now I want you to leave here and go down to the Capitol. So I turned, and you know, you can walk straight toward the Capitol through the park. And so I'm headed down that way, and a pastor meets me and hands me a staff. Now, Steve, you know this, but I want Roger to hear this. And so I get to the, you know, the reflecting pool on the backside of the Capitol, the little one. And I, I arrived at 111. President Trump quit speaking at 111. And so I held the staff up and pointed it toward the Capitol at 112. 
And at 112, they walked the absolute proof into the Congress, and they laid it down on the on a certain desk. When they did, uh, they had already arrested a man in Italy. They had already done these things. They knew the satellites that were used from the Vatican. They knew all of that. And so when they did, the whole I ordered the Red Sea and the corruption to be revealed, and the place came apart after that. Mm-hmm. Okay. A year later, I was back up in D.C. Well, it was 9.7 months later. I was on the other side of the Capitol on, uh, with the Justice Foundation, and they asked me to speak, me and Timothy Dixon. So I held my staff, the one behind me, over toward the Capitol again, and the Lord said, tell the Red Sea to come back together. Okay. Now, that was that long, that this long. All right, two weeks ago, a friend of mine sent me the, the video and the pictures where I held the staff out, the water turned black, and now they drained it, and it's a dry pool. Wow. Well, remember <laughs> Moses stretched his rod out, and they walked across on dry land. Yeah. And so it dried up. The, the whole pool dried up. Okay. Now, when we were on the other side of it, I said these words. I said, um, uh, I had said to you, Steve, in a, in a closed meeting we had, mm-hmm. and I said, uh, the giant falls on his face. I said, I don't know why everybody thinks he fell on his back. Yeah, you he falls did. on his face. Well, that day, now here I'm coming up to this portal. So here that day, uh, after I stretched that rod out, um, you know, Facebook fell. Facebook, the tech giant, fell on his face that day. Face, face, face. Facebook. Facebook fell. And 45 minutes An Elijah moment. Mm-hmm. Well, we saw the Red Sea time stretching the rod, and now the Elijah moment. So I called for fire. I said, Lord, send fire down wow. here. Let the world see that you are God, and there is no other God but you. Well, Facebook fell right after that. But then suddenly, this fiery portal shows up over the White House. And it starts gathering around the White House. Now, on Mount Carmel, the battle was for a portal. Remember that. Elijah against the prophets of Baal to see who could control this opening in the heavens. And Elijah dominated it. And so after we call for that fiery, uh, for the fire to come like Elijah, they all heard it. All the news heard it. Then suddenly this thing starts gathering over the White House. At the same time, the occultic world is talking about a portal. They wanted that portal. That's what you see trying to seize that portal. But it's too late. That fire had gathered and it started to fall now. Well, I don't know if you're going to say this, Robin, but when the fire came down that, that Elijah called out, it lapped up the water and dried it out. I didn't, it I didn't think of that. Yeah. But, man, it did, Steve. And they went dry. That reflecting pool just went dry. And so this is how prophetic all of this is. And, and um, see, we live. Okay, I'll say this about what, what Roger said. Uh I remember when I heard Kim Clement say that, he said, he said, remember the name Stone, Stone. And, and I didn't know who Roger Stone was. I don't know that they, everybody knew your name then. And he said, I said, uh, I asked a friend of mine, I said, does, does President Trump have a friend named Stone? And he looked up, he said, yeah, he has this friend named Roger Stone. This is way back. <laughs> And when all of that happened, oh, it grieved me when they stormed your house. They did this. I, I mean, I thought, dear God, man, this is a one big show they're trying to put on. But, but you were the one suffering for their show. And I, I, all of a sudden, I heard it in my spirit, and I said it. When the stone is, when David releases the stone, and Trump is David. So when he releases the stone, 
the giant will fall. And from that day forward, the stone has been in flight. From the day you were released, you're the stone in flight. You know, brother, I'm going to say this. Satan is scared of a stone. He's afraid of a stone. It, nothing scares him more than a stone. Uh, David came out and challenged uh, what held God's people in a prisoner. I mean, they couldn't even get out of their tents. They were caught behind doors. They wouldn't move. They, nothing. And David comes out with five smooth stones, but he only takes one. And that one stone, the word smooth there means it was chosen and dedicated for a certain purpose. And so he took that stone and that's, and Satan began to be afraid of that because uh, in Genesis 3.15, it says the seed of the woman will crush your head and you'll bruise his heel. And that stone hit that giant right between the eyes. The Hebrew says it dropped into his brain like a pebble in a brook. See, what you did was when you were released, David released the stone. You dropped into their, their brain like a pebble in a brook. Jeez. They can't get you off their mind. <laughs> yeah, they, you, you're it's just to laugh, but that's kind of good that they can't get you off well, their mind. Isn't that right? I it's mean, isn't torturing, that right? It's, it's Trust torturing me, I, them, basically. I'm living rent-free, rent trust me, in the heads of the American left. Uh, I love, to be uh, candid about this, uh, I recognize right now that coming on here and talking about this openly is going to subject me to a whole nother round of vituperation and had to pray about it a long time. <laughs> I wanted to do it at the right place. I, it became clear to me that Elijah Streams was the right place. That's why I reached out initially to Robin and then an Elijah you know, moment. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's no question about it. And, and now I feel Here's what I feel the strongest about. We, we who believe, we can close the portal, but we can only close it through prayer, massive mm -hmm. prayer, mm -hmm. millions of Christians praying to close the portal. If you look closely, there's like the, it's like a swirling cold. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've tried to find, you know, some some natural explanation mm -hmm. or an aerostat balloon for weather. No, I, I sent a personal friend down there. He thought I was crazy. I said, hey, do me a favor. Go down there. You just, a regular digital camera. And see what you see. And you we have picture. that. And Roger, what, how long ago did that? Did they take that picture? So roughly, so those were sent to me by my friend John Ardwood. I sent another guy down because I wanted to be absolutely sure. I'm not interested in embarrassing anybody here, yeah. you know, as myself. Uh, but the, these pictures are only several weeks old. Okay, uh, so while you're talking, uh, Emily has. We have three of them from you. There's only a couple weeks old, several weeks old. You said and. Remember what we just showed you a few minutes ago is months old, three or four months at least. Yeah. So Emily, while you're talking, Roger, show those three photos that your friends took. There is that there. circular thing. There you can see it. Uh, it's very, very clear. Uh, it doesn't move day or night. It's harder to see during the day, but you, you see it at night. Uh, and uh, I'm absolutely convinced uh, about the inherent, there it is again, about the inherent evil of what's going on in the White House, what's going on in the country. And I think it's imperative that people know about this, that people of good faith, that Christians know about this, and we begin a, a national, essentially a prayer assault to close the portal. That's good. When now, there's the one during the day that it's harder to see. But that's yeah, but you can the, see it. It's it's there. It's right there above the White House. So it's always uh, above that gable. You notice yeah. that? Oh, it's it right is. above the gable. It is. Now, Roger, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you're talking about prayer that it needs. We have, we have to close the portal. That's what this is about. We now, mm -hmm. as Christians, our obligation mm -hmm. is to close the portal, which is to essentially to drive Satan away. Uh, I can tell you in my own life, uh, since my redemption. Uh, first of all, on Saturdays, I march on abortion clinics with others. Uh, on Sundays, wow. I travel a lot, uh, but I, I try to speak at a different church. I try to witness for the Lord at a different wow. church. Uh, I've met many great friends. Satan conti continues to try to put temptation in my path. Mm -hmm. but there's, there's zero chance, zero chance. I, I'm a man on a mission now, uh, <laughs> and, and, I, I, and I am... 
I am absolutely adamant about doing his will. Uh, I don't think the country, my friend General Michael Flynn, who's a great man, yeah, a great is. Christian, a great constitutionalist, uh, he gets attacked even more than I do because he was the director of national intelligence and he knows a lot of embarrassing things uh, about, uh, about uh, the evil ones. Uh, but he says in his speech, you know, I think America may have five years, three years. I don't think we have that long. I think we have six months to a year to save this nation. Uh, yeah. it's, it's that close. And therefore, every decision I make um, yeah. is seen in, in that context. I mean, I just came back from a hard trip to uh, Salt Lake City and then Austin. Uh, and it's always heartening. Sure, there are guys who yell at you. You know, I had some guy follow me out of a restaurant last night screaming at me. I'm a, oh, wow. I'm a Russian spy. I'm a piece of garbage. I'm a traitor. Donald Trump ruined America. You know, I just try to let it roll off my back. I always say the same thing. Thank you very much. I'll pray for you. And that, makes them, that makes them even <laughs> angrier, by the way. Now, Robin, you started to say something as well. What were you about to say there? Well, when he said, when Roger's talking about it, people don't realize he's absolutely spot on about this thing. What's happening is, is we are, see, the, the, the occultic world and all of that, they know things that Christians won't look at. Yeah. And they take advantage of it. And Steve, you know this. And, and, and what's happening is, is they planned on, I could show you in the in prophecy they planned on bringing in a new world order, a new a one world government in 2022. That's the year they must do it. If they can't do it in 2022, they've lost it until wow. after 2030. They're, they're and they just throws they, their nope. plans completely off. Oh, it does. Do and, okay. Yeah, and see this portal is is. Remember, I said how they come together in that realm. This portal's part of that. See, see, it was very easy to see what they plan. 2.22, 2.22, if you add the twos, it's 12, government. So we know it's a portal they're talking about, government. Well, 2 plus 2 plus 2 times 2.22 is 1776. And oh, that's really? the government. Yeah, and that's the government they planned on changing. Oh, man. Well, in 1777, the Masonic Lodge, Oh, uh, did their first order to bring in a new world order and seize control. And one plus seven plus seven plus seven is 22. And they plan on doing it in 22. This whole thing, see, they live by these numbers. They move by these numbers. Yeah. And they knew on 222, 222 was their day to seize government. And what you're watching right now, they must do it before the year's over. You've got to remember that. It, and, it's imperative that they do it. For those that are watching that have never heard us talk about portals, and you know, I'm relatively new in it myself. When you're talking about a portal, it's like a finite opening in the heavens through which the enemy can has unlimited access coming in and out. Is that would be my definition? How would you define a portal? Uh, oh, what, what, what different okay. ways would you? Use? Okay, it was like in Elijah's day. Okay. okay, on Mount Carmel, that fire came down yeah, from yeah. a portal. Now, and it was a fight for the portal. Okay. See, Satan can't invent anything. He seizes, he tries to seize something that is there. See, the, the earth is slated for revival. Everything's ready for revival. There will be a billion souls saved in this next move of God. Wow. And so a portal can be can carry both things. But if the enemy can seize it, see, he in a real portal, he can't get access to heaven. You need to remember, people should remember this. He cannot access heaven. He does portals through time. Time oh, really? is his thing. Okay. And he moves through. But when a portal opens into the heavens, He's looking to seize control of that thing. And that's what they're counting on. And so we have to close access to this thing. Okay. That's what Roger's talking about. The access to him must be closed because he, he's, he's looking for access into the earth. It's just like, think about this. 
if there's a fire of revival coming, then suddenly there'll be a fire fires in California break out. Okay. It's because when fire is granted to come in the spirit, he seizes on things and brings it in the natural. And so it's always a fight between Elijah and Baal. So, uh, Robin, are we closing an evil portal or are we closing evil's access to God's portal? Which? Yes. Or which? yes. I, see, see, times and seasons meet. They're moeds. But but you, what you're looking at on there, remember I told you when I first saw that, I said, does that look good to you? Yeah, and I you didn't said, know. I didn't said, know. That, yeah, and I didn't either. But you said, is that good or evil? I said, well, does it look good? No, it didn't. What you're looking at is, I'm trying to say this the best I can. Yeah, People, sure. okay, believers, we, we know revival is coming. Yes. Satan is trying to seize <clears throat> on something and take a nation away. See, you close his access to use anything. Okay. When you do, he can't he can't get in. But he can't he's looking for access it's like that portal. He's looking for the access to that thing. He wants that thing. Baal wanted that thing, but it, he couldn't get his hands on it because Elijah wouldn't let him through it. That's good. And so, so go, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. Well, I, here's what I want to do because this will help me define the portal. And both you, Roger and you are very, very clear that we need prayer to, to close. So here's here's a question. Give me a couple of lines of a prayer. Just, you know, there, there could be long, lengthy prayers. Give me a couple lines of a prayer, Robin, that would say how to pray to close this thing. Because if millions of people hear this, what would they say to pray? What would they need to pray? Satan is only afraid of one thing. Remember this. Uh, faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith will start where you know the will of God. That's yeah. where it begins. He's only, how did Jesus defeat him on the Mount of Temptation? He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Every time he said it is written. Yeah. He didn't just say, I, I do it because I'm God in the flesh. <laughs> even though he was God in the flesh, but he didn't do that because if he had did that, only he could do it. Hmm. But he said it is written so that we can do it. Okay. So we have to stand up and quote the word like Philippians 2, 9, 10, and 11. Jesus has been given a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, you spirit of hell residing in that portal trying to get through into this earth, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I, I deny your access to this planet. You cannot come through it, and you have to bow your knee to the name of Jesus. Now you're talking about something that can actually stop him. Awesome. If you're just awesome. going to get on the ground and beg God to do something, forget it. He's already done it. You got to pray. We with have, a, you're, you're saying you got to pray with authority, not just, hey, uh, it says this and I'm praying. You got to demand and declare and prophesy. With his word. Yeah. And his, his name. Word. With his word. Uh, his Isaiah name. 54, 17. What does that say? It says, it says that uh, uh, you have uh, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Okay. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you'll condemn it. And you point your finger at that thing and say, you will not, no weapon you could form can possibly prosper here. We deny access. We deny access. You know what, uh, Roger, the, the scripture says that the Lord gave the earth to the children of men. So that means authority is given here to the children of men. That's why wickedness has an expression of power, because they're in the realm of the earth. Now, when they die and leave this earth, they're not the hot rods they were when they were here, you know. Yeah. And this big circus you see going on in Washington, where Obama's the ringmaster, uh, Biden and Harris is the court jesters. You've got the bearded lady with the transgender took over of associate health care. 
and all the trained all the trained elephants jumping around in Washington is what everybody's coming to see. They're watching the dogs lead the elephants around. You're referring to rhinos when you're talking, right? Am I saying yeah. that right? Well, and elephants. There's trained elephants in Washington, brother, and they're jumping around everywhere. You can tell the difference in a rogue elephant and a real elephant and a trained one. Trained ones pick up paintbrushes with their their trunks and paint little flowers. Uh, you can see them. They're all on Fox. Well, they just, and, they, and the Bible is very clear. We're, we're not fighting men. We're fighting principalities. Oh, Yeah. This is this speaks directly to that point. In sure, words, it does. Don't mm -hmm. don't view this as a political struggle, although it's in the political realm. That's just because of the realm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, that's where those spirits come to fight. Well, and, and, and look, those, those who are we're opposed to, it's not that they just have a different philosophy than we do. No, this the, these people are evil. They yes. are they are satanic. Yes. They, they, they are not believers. They want to erase our right and our and our, right. our ability to believe. Uh, That's this, exactly right. This, 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 is, this, is, this is the big event. And no, we don't have two years <laughs> or five years. I think that America rises or falls between now and the end of the year. I agree. Oh, I happen to agree with you. Yeah, it's so true. I'm, I'm on board. It's, it's yeah. this year. This yeah. is it. We're, and you see what he said, the big event. Yeah. It's yeah. the it's the greatest show on earth happening yeah. right now. Yeah, you know, and some of you, I don't know if you know who Kat Kerr is, but she's starting in in uh, 20, I think it's 2012, God told Kat, declare, let the show begin. And uh, um, several different prophets not knowing about that said, this is the greatest show on earth. Robin is one of them. So by the way, the, can I just make a point about that? If this is, is if this is let the show begin, and if this is the greatest show on earth, we're supposed to enjoy this while it happens, not just fist, fists clenched at the enemy. Uh, we're supposed to enjoy this show, and frankly, I am kind of enjoying. Well, you know? I think the Lord wants us to be happy warriors. But yeah. here's what I would suggest: if you live in the Washington area, if you live in the Maryland or Virginia suburbs, live in the district company. Go down there tonight or tomorrow night. See if we're crazy. We're not crazy. This, <laughs> this, this, this is real. Uh, yeah. and, when, and when I thought about speaking out about it, uh, it was Barry who urged me to call Robin uh, and ask Robin, yeah. Robin, am I out of my mind or is this is this real? And he told me, no, it's your real. You're you're on the right path. Good. And I, it's funny because I was getting on a plane and he said, of course, you're getting on a plane. Because the stone is in flight, he said to me. <laughs> and it, 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 it reinforced my belief that this is this is what the Lord wants me to do. This is only part of what he wants me to do. But if millions of Christians pray, and not just yeah. have to pray fervently, uh, we can close this portal, which means we're closing access of the That's evil exactly ones right. to this planet, mm -hmm. to, to our realm. Uh, and look, the, right now, the guys at Media Matters for America are rushing to their computers to attack us. They attack us for our faith, which is which is outrageous. But, Steve, you had a great quote. Well, yeah, and I don't remember the first part exactly, but the things of God, the gospel, are foolishness to those who are perishing. So if you're looking at this and you go, this is foolishness, you better watch out because you might be among those who are perishing right now. You better repent. Now, everyone that is perishing can still repent, or most that are perishing. But the, if the things of God are... Do you remember the first part of that scripture, Robin? Do you remember how that goes? Something, something. Uh, the foolish, you know, um, the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. Or it's very yeah. close to that. That's um, right. That's right. The preaching of the gospel is foolishness to those who are perishing. Yeah. So if you're hearing about Jesus Christ and the cross and, and repentance uh, from dead works, if that's foolishness to you, the scripture is very clear where you're at. You're in a perishing state. Yeah, well, can not I, only that, but but uh, in all honesty, my friend Tucker Carlson makes this point. Do those in power act like they have the luxury of time, or are they in a hurry to destroy everything we hold dear? Are they in a hurry? These people act like they're under pressure because they know their time is limited, mm -hmm. uh, and they know this battle lies just ahead—not two years, not five years, right. 
now, mm-hmm. now, between now and the end of this year. I, I agree. The course will be set, which is why, for example, um, we have an attorney general who says that parents who go to school board meetings to object to their children being taught vile critical race theory, turning white against black, or demanding that children be confused about their sexual identity when they can't even understand what that is in the elementary schools, uh, that those are desperate people. Those are people uh, desperate to, to sell their poison. Uh, mm. and, and, uh, and they act furtive. They act, they act wild eye. Look at the wild eyes in the, of the ones who are the most radical. I find this, uh, you know, uh, it's the truth. Be, Ubiquitous. Oh, yeah. So uh, th- this is this is uh, th- we were born for this moment. Yeah, I have yeah, for sure. That. For sure. Uh, I've been preparing this for for this moment my entire life without even knowing it. Yeah. I just thought I was a political warrior, but this is no longer a war in the political realm. That's right. Uh, and and I do know how it comes out because I know how the Bible comes out, but I don't know exactly what the plan is. But I do know that closing this portal is crucial to victory. And I want others to talk about it. I want others to see it. You can look it up online. You can go to that live camera. It's up every night, folks. Mm -hmm. They'll take it down, by the way. I predict to you they'll now take it down so people can't see it. Right. But but, uh, this is not some practical joke. This isn't some conspiracy theory. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced that this is uh, demonic. It mm. is a satanic portal. Uh, it, it is mm. access to this earth uh, by those who are evil, and only by closing it will be we will we be successful in saving uh, this nation under God. So good. Okay, can can I say something right here? I mean, yeah. uh, uh, because I want you to uh, I want you to think about this just a minute. Okay, uh, since that portal formed. Okay, wasn't it Maryland that just passed such a a, a hideous thing trying to pass that? To, uh, wasn't it Maryland? I'm not sure. That, I'm not that sure tried, about abortion. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure which state. One of was. these, yeah. And see this this thing. If all of this is not real, and people don't believe that this is real, okay, then you've got to ask yourself something. Now, now watch this. You're talking about portals. How heavy do you want to get right now? Okay, do we want it. to get heavy? Yeah, let's get heavy. Okay. If we're going to talk about portals, let's talk about this. Let's talk about a big one. Let's talk about one that was, they, they gave their own prophecy. Uh, there's a big Hadrian Collider in CERN, at CERN, Switzerland. Okay. That Hadrian Collider, when they did, when they dedicated their rail tunnel, how come they came on YouTube and did a big thing, a big presentation where they had heads of government sitting there? They had a flyby salute with the Air Force, and they're sitting there, and this is the, this is the big dramatization they put on in front of everybody. They had their workers march up out of hell. They came up out of a pit dressed in prison clothes. When they got out on the platform, suddenly a demonic spirit hits them and they start acting crazy and they started performing illicit acts on stage, acting like it, acting it out while they're trying to break through a glass wall. And if you will watch this close, I've never told this, but one other time, but if you watch that thing close, they really? almost show you this thing coming, and then Pan walks out of the glass wall and sits down in the middle while shrouds are put over people and they die. Now, at CERN did that as their, to represent their new rail tunnel because they said, we're opening a portal. We're trying to open dimension C. To, and every time they fire that thing up, they said, we see faces. It's been reported the faces that show up in the other dimensions. This, Roger, is the portal. This is the same thing. And so they're looking at the dimensions, and they see these faces. They said, but we can't get them across. We can't get them over to this side. And without a religious ritual, see, they need that. And so um, if that's not so, then tell me, why did they do that? Tell me, why is it built on the temple of Apollo? 
And why is uh, Revelation chapter 9 says when the bottomless pit or portal is opened, it says it's uh, the leader of it's Apollyon or Apollo. And, uh, Robin, when you say they need a religious um, ritual, yeah, th- are they they're looking for a worship of Lucifer? Is that well, right? Well, this is what they know. They know this. See, science could open the dimension, but it couldn't get the spirit world involved. The spirit world don't don't respond to science. Mm-mm. It responds to spiritual things. And so they can't figure out how to get it over. And so now get this. Uh, three days ago, CERN kicked up again. They have op- they started it really? spinning really? again after three years. And so now here, here you go. So when it's built on the temple of Apollo, outside the door, is the god Shiva in a big statue. I'm not telling you anything you can't look up. The god Shiva, you know, the four-armed Hindu god, the god of destruction. That's the same one that sits at the head of the table of the WHO, the god of destruction, Shiva. They've got it at, they had it at their table when China. You can see it online. There's a on the wall. It sits there. Okay, then Obama in 2010 appeared as Shiva yeah. on the front of Newsweek, and they gave him four arms, and they called him the God of all things. Now we see them passing laws to kill a baby 28 days after it's born. Now, only after that portal opened did they do that. Only when that formed in D.C. did that happen. So this thing is they're pushing this to the end of this year because 2022 is their prophesied year. Yep. And if it's not so, somebody answer all these questions. Yeah. No, no, and, I think that I think that's absolutely right. And and I have I've had a very clear uh, instinct uh, that that you're about to have this fall yet another be by mail in. Uh, so I, I see the very strong possibility of another fa- using the tactic of fear. They know there's a red tide waiting, that coming. They, they can see that. Uh, between gasoline prices and food shortages and inflation uh, and the fact that, that our foreign policy in shambles, uh, that, 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 that uh, a, 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 a Iraq is raining missiles on Israel, we have a war in Ukraine, we have the, the Chinese harassing American flagged ships in the South China Sea. Uh, we, we, have, we have an attempt here at home to erase our culture, to, re, to relace, relace our, our, our right to worship, uh, mm. to erase our history, mm. uh, to confuse people about gender when the Bible is very clear on this mm-hmm. question. Uh, and this is, a, this is the manifestation of, uh, of many years planning. In yes. other words, this, didn't, this did not yes. just happen. That's right. Uh, and it, it was, it was, I think it was certainly a, a, uh, a, a Kim Clement prophecy who foresaw the Lord put in the right place at the yes. right time. Not a politician. Never want, I can just tell you, I've known him 42 years. He's been, I was at his wedding. Uh, he was at my wedding when wow. I married my wife. Uh, I know I knew his parents very well. They were great people, Fred and Mary. Uh, I knew his brother Robert, who's passed. I worked with him very closely. Uh, he he never had a burning need to be president. This has nothing to do with his ambition. Hmm. He, he didn't need a big fancy house. He had the nicest house you could imagine. His his mansion in Marlago is a uh, is an is an extraordinary home. He didn't need a giant fancy airplane. He already had a his own 747. He didn't need to be well-known or he didn't need the acclaim. Everybody knew who Donald Trump was. I mean, you have to understand, serving the American people has cut his net worth in half. Yes. And on top of that, he and his family have had to suffer the vituperation and slings and arrows of a political establishment that he terrifies. They're terrified of him. That's why today they want to eliminate the possibility uh, of a uh, of another Trump candidacy uh, hmm. because you uh, putting a godly man in the White House again uh, Joe Biden claims to be a Catholic yet he's crazy about abortion I'm sorry that just doesn't it doesn't work that way that just doesn't, you can't be a good Catholic 
You can't That's be right. a good Christian uh, and be for the murder of the unborn. That's right. So uh, this is this is all going to come to pass. Now, I believe it's just my personal belief that he's going to be president 45 and president 47. It, it has been done before. It was a New Yorker who did it. Grover Cleveland, the last conservative Democrat uh, who was then defeated and then came back to victory. Uh, I, I think that that is I think that is what's going to happen. I know that he's praying about it. He's told me he's praying about it. I asked him, are you going to run again? This was a week ago. And he said, well, I'm, pr I'm thinking about it. I'm praying about it. I'd like to, but uh, it's too early to say. I think he's inclined to do it. A and that strikes fear uh, in the those who are advocating the new world order. That strikes absolutely mm -hmm. fear in, 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 in Klaus Schwab uh, and George Soros uh, and those who just like to erase Christ. They like to erase the Bible. They like to erase our ability to worship as as we please. So uh, this is an epic moment in time. Uh, it's are not just partisan political uh, uh, contests uh, of no consequence. Mm. This is an epic struggle uh, uh, between, as I said earlier, dark and light. And I'm going to be vilified for this. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get the daylights kicked out of me. <laughs> uh, but, but I don't really care because yeah. I, I, I prayed about it. Uh, between Robin's advice, between the advice of my own pastor, I know I'm doing his will. I'm absolutely That's positive. Of, uh, and let the slings and arrows come. Roger, so, I was going to ask you, for, for my sake and other people, how long ago was this event with uh, Franklin Graham where you received the Lord like and repented? It was about four months before my trial. My trial was in January uh, of, 20, of uh, 2020. So a couple of years, two years. It, May I just say, it's, it's been been you, you, I had to have the odyssey of making a decision uh, to leave the Catholic Church. I mean, that was a very tough decision. Yeah. The Catholic Church was the church of my parents and sure. my grandparents, and I had all my sacraments there. But uh, the, the epic corruption uh, of the Catholic Church, mm. uh, the, not only the hiding of pedophilia, mm. but we, we, have a, we have a pope who doesn't believe uh, in private property rights. I looked. I researched this. The private property rights are enshrined in the Bible in nine different yeah, places. Yeah. The, the Lord likes free enterprise. The like the Lord has nothing against hard work. Uh, yeah. But but so this Pope is illegitimate in my opinion. In fact, well, I, I don't even think he's the real Pope. Yeah, there was a time when the Catholic Church was a bulk work of anti-communism. Mm -hmm. Those days are over. Now, when I leave church, when I go to Coral Ridge Presbyterian, I leave inspired. I go. leave happy. I, I leave ready to get back in the battle Monday morning. Uh, so, you know, they say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a, a, a different result. There's no reason why you should leave church on Sunday depressed. There's no reason why you should leave. Well, right? your, your advancement in all things kingdom, all things of the Lord <laughs> amazes me. In two years, do you you probably aren't even in touch with how far advanced you are in things in the spiritual maturity. I mean, it just stands out to me and I just compliment you. You know, I'm, I'm about to hit 67. So we're close in age, but uh, man, it's taken me all these years to get to where I am. And you've just skyrocketed there. And, you, and then the Lord has used you to marry because the, the wisdom of the political, because he, He's not letting you, or you're, and you realize that you're not leaving the political scene at all. So anyway, uh, Robin, what were you going to say? Well, I was just, I was going to say a couple of things about this. Number one is that, is that, uh, remember, when the Red Sea does close, and it will come back together. Now, remember that. It's going to come back at some point. When it does, it was a violent, it was a violent thing. This thing is not going to be pretty when it comes back together. Remember, to, to watch the Red Sea crash down on Pharaoh was not... Uh, can I tell you why, Pharaoh? Can you, can you think about one reason why Pharaoh would have went into the Red Sea? I mean, you got to think about that. The Red Sea parts, Moses goes across, and here comes Pharaoh down after him. What kind of idiot does it take? <laughs> To go down in the Red Sea after the man, unless Pharaoh thought it parted for him. Oh. He thought it parted for him because he believed he was a god. 
The Democrat Party, now I'm just going to say this, and you know, the Lord told me this. He said, you and I both know the Democrat Party's evil. Mm-hmm. That's what he told me. Now, he said this to me. Wow. And the Lord just has conversations with me, you know. And he said, you and I both know the Democrat Party is evil. He said, now watch this. He said, I'm not holding them responsible for this. He said, I'm holding the Republican Party responsible for this. Are you serious? Yes, sir. He told me that. He said, because they pretended to be the guardians of the people. They abandoned their president. They, They did all that they did, and they could stop it tomorrow if they wanted to. And this is and and this is and this is what he told me. He said, now, uh, he said, I'm holding them responsible for this. Now. When the the Democrat Party. Now, remember, we're still dealing with this, these spirits, these in these realms. You can watch demon possessed people almost when they react on television. And so when this thing opened when the Republican party abandoned their president and just split the way they did the the Democrat Pharaoh thought it open for him. He thinks they've held it open for them to go through on dry land and destroy watch God's people to destroy a way of life of, of the Bible to destroy what all the values the nation's built on. They think they've left it open for them. And they think that they're going through it, the arrogance of this thing. Mm. But there is coming a crashing down. And when it comes down, it's not going to be pretty. Now, I'll tell you something. You know, when, when, when that fraudulent uh, was anybody with sawdust for brains knows that was fraudulent. Mm-hmm. Okay. A nobody who can hold five rallies a day, draw fifteen to 25,000 people each rally can be beaten by a man who him, Barack Obama, Cher, and Bon Jovi can't draw 300 people to a parking lot <laughs> know, and yeah, sit yeah. in a basement and beat a man like that. I mean, horse sense tells you that's crazy. Okay, now, with, when all of this went on, the Lord told me, he said, the office of the president has been vacated. He said, uh, there's a jackal sitting in his seat. So I started calling him a jackal and I, the Lord said he was a jackal. Well, later I find out that Jesus, you know, I didn't think about it. Jesus called Herod a fox. Well, a fox in Hebrew means jackal and it means an illegitimate. He was illegitimate. Herod wasn't even a Jew. He was illegitimate. So Jesus called him a fox. Well, I called Biden a jackal. You can pray for Joe Biden. You probably should. You could pray for the office of the president, but you can't pray for President Joe Biden. You might as well pray for the Easter Bunny because he don't exist. There's no such being. There's just a fraudulent title. And if you let that go, then this will never be fixed. Okay, now, this is what he said to me. Now, I'm going to show you how the prophetic works. He said, he's a jackal. I said, he's a jackal. The Lord said, he's a jackal. I said, he's a jackal. I said it over and over and all this time. And then all at once, it shows up on the news that a fox bit one of the congressmen, and they're all Democrats, they're biting. And it was a jackal showed up in, on the, in the Capitol, on the Capitol grounds, bit Uh, this congressman and then they found a den of foxes and they had to put them all down. Wow. Wow. And the Lord said, he's a jackal, a fox. And then all these jackals show up in DC and start biting people. Then they all had rabies. They did. They all had rabies. Uh. And so they had to take shots. And when Roger said a while ago, something about spewing their poison, The Lord gave me a prophetic word on the 11th hour, a few, uh, maybe a couple ago. And he said, now they're going to swallow their own poison. He said, now they'll begin to swallow their own poison. He also gave me a word that Fauci ran his tongue down the throat of a bat. 
and he's got two fang holes in his tongue. And he spewed that mess all over the world. And he said, now he'll drink his own poison. They're going to have to drink their own thing. And this is about to come down, Steve. The Red Sea will close again. It will come back together. And when it does, it's just like he was talking about a red wave. It will close again. And when it does, it, it ain't going to be pretty. Because imagine what it would have looked like when Pharaoh. Well, on this up. red wave, when it happens, Robin, it's not what I'm hearing you say. It's not because of all these righteous Republicans that did did and said the right thing. It's because the people have crossed the, and the people have been praying and God's going to close it for the people, not because of those rhinos what, and other Republicans. This, water, this, is a very, this is a very key point, and people should understand this. Uh, I'm a veteran of 40 years in Washington, D.C. You cannot think of this anymore in terms of Republicans and Democrats. That's not the division. It really isn't. There's one party, and they're all in it. It's the Green Party. I don't mean the political Green Party, but it's fueled by money and power. Mm. Uh, it, it is. It, it, this is perhaps one of the one of I wouldn't say the mistakes, but the misjudgments by Donald Trump. He came to Washington thinking that there were two teams: the Republicans mm. are with me, the Democrats are over here. Ronald Reagan, who I worked for in three presidential campaigns, one of the greatest presidents in my lifetime, uh, he was an outsider, but the party had coalesced around him. You know, anyway. I said this today, today on the 11th hour. I said, there is no way that the power moves that are being made that could be made without everybody being on the real same page. They're on the same team. Or there's no way they could make these moves they're making. There's no way it could happen. You know, I was down at a, a rally in Orlando one day. And it wasn't long back, I forget the name of it. Y'all would remember it, both of you. And they invited me to come, and I didn't speak or anything. I listened. Mike Pence was there. Different ones were there. All the Lindsey Graham was there. All of them came out and spoke. And I'm sitting there listening to them, and I didn't realize how I said it. I'm just sitting there at a table trying to be nice. <laughs> Steve, I had a suit on. I had a suit. <laughs> Robin Bullock had a suit on. I had okay. a suit on, man. I mean, it. I was I was going to be good, and I was just <laughs> sitting there. And they kept coming out. And this is what they would say, Roger. They would say, we got to fight. We got to fight. We got to fight. And then I, I said, well, how do, how do we fight? How Okay, how do you say we're going to fight? We got that. We, yeah. we already did that. And then... Finally, they just kept on and on, and I said it out, and Robin said, I said it in a preacher voice, you know. I said it loud where you could hear it. I said, why don't somebody address the elephant in the room? And I didn't realize it was full of elephants. I mean, the whole room, it was all Republicans. <laughs> or, or, and I said, Gentlemen, yeah, I, I, said I, I apologize. I have to move on to another show. Uh, so I thank you, my <laughs> brothers, for having me. Uh, I thank you for your inspiration. Uh, I knew this was the right place to talk about the portal. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. I call on anybody who, 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 who's seen this, check it out for yourself, but pray. We need your prayers. We have to close the portal. It can be closed if millions of Americans will realize what we're saying. Robin is absolutely right. He's pretty savvy for a guy who's not a politician. Uh, and God bless you for having me here today. I now go to the Stone Zone at frankspeech.com. 
show I'm doing every day at five o'clock Eastern, four o'clock Central. I love being on Elijah's dreams, and I, I want to thank you both. Thank you so much, Roger. Keep God getting, bless you. Keep getting in the head, man. Just fly yeah. in their head. Stay in their yeah. thoughts. It don't yeah. matter what they say. You're in their thinking. The stone sank you. like a pebble in a yeah, brook. Good. God yeah. bless you. So we'll in see their you brain. Then. We'll see you then, Roger. I'll let you go. And then, uh, Robin, I'm going to have you finish that one thing. But go ahead, uh, Roger. I know you need to get to go to that show. So you were saying... You, did you what you said in a preacher's voice? Did you finish that? No, I was well. I just said out loud, Steve. I said, I said, why don't somebody address the elephant in the room? Okay, well, that's what you said. Yeah, okay. I didn't realize that. I, I didn't think about the Republicans are elephants, and I said, yeah. You know, I said, <laughs> why don't somebody address the elephant in the room? I said, we did do that. It's already done. Eighty million of us did it. Yeah, and we did it right. And you let them steal it. In other yeah. words, that's what I was saying. Yeah. And yeah. so they don't fool me, man. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I listen to one voice. And I hear God. And it, and when he tells me something and I say it, it's amazing how it turns out the political realm is doing that exactly. That's and amazing. so, you know, that's I'm not amazing. a politician, but I. But well, I will what, tell you. what'll be interesting is it's dry land on the reflecting pool. It'll be interesting if they fill that in and when they fill that in, I'm curious if it'll go, if they'll suddenly fill it in, which is like the closing of the sea. I don't know. I'm just kind of curious if there'll be a natural phenomenon. Well, I never time. thought about this either. I, I never thought about it until you said it. See, I was thinking about how, where I held the rod, it dried mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Well, that's true, but there had to be an Elijah uh, Red Sea time and an Elijah mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And the Elijah moment, if you remember, I was on your program. There you were. And I said, this is the Elijah moment. And now we're talking about it. Yeah. The fire, everything on the Elijah stream. Yeah. And yeah. then you said, I had forgot about that. Well, yeah, and one of the things that he came know, down and licked up the water. Yeah, it licked up, lapped up, which, yeah, I think licked up is the right term. It licked up the flames. It licked up the water. There was dry. And so now the water's gone. So it'll be interesting when they choose to refill that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no proof that that'll happen in a natural in a specific timing, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. No, but there's no way that could be a coincidence. Yeah. You know, that's and there is, yeah, there's it, no well, such was, thing as. I was going to say, wouldn't it be fascinating if there was a sudden storm in Washington, D.C. and that felt that thing I don't up? know, man. I don't, I don't know. know. I know this. It's coming now. Yeah. The closing of the sea. Yeah. We have been ahead of it. We were in the spirit the whole time. Yeah. The command was made to open. It opened and dried. The Elijah moment was called and the portal of fire formed over the White House. And when it did, the the pool dried up yeah everything they have lost steve they've lost mm -hmm. they've lost and they know they've lost yeah it wouldn't surprise me if you don't hear of a very famous politician moving to another country soon i'm just oh. going to leave it at that and uh um, do, do, and can i just ask you like this do you mean escaping to another country well they won't be called escaping probably okay <laughs> but it but you know, this thing is about to to change. This thing it sounds like this thing's about to get real. Really oh, it's, real. It, I said those words this morning. I you said, did. You real. did. Yeah, I said, it's get real. <laughs> it just isn't popped it? into my head. I <laughs> yeah. don't normally use that expression. Yeah, and I thought this thing's about to get real. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're we're here now. We're on the other side of this thing. I said this two years, and I'll say this before we close anyway. Uh, it was an honor to be on with you, my brother. Well, you know, it, it always to is to me. Yeah, well, same yeah. here, too. I'm so glad it was a neat, uh, the three of us together was a very good yeah. to process all that. But, or, yeah. But, yeah, uh, I, um, uh, what was I just saying to you? I don't I mean, know. I, you were gonna, I don't know. You had a thought. <laughs> You're like me, you know, it's just like, whoosh, well, I'm thinking of so much, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but I think all of this is, we're about to see all of this end now. Yeah, and yeah. what's about to happen, what I was going to say is, is two, two years before this, this uh, uh, fraudulent uh, inflated sickness happened, 
I'll put it that. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I can I can say yeah, we're it on, on Rumble, your so you can say whatever you want. We're on. Rumble. Oh yeah, you know me. I'm used to talking in code. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so anyway, before this uh, this pandemic took place. And now you can see it where they call Pan out. I, I kept thinking, I've wondered, who is that creature? It's Pan. That's who it was. That's it was an Pan. actual, that's, yeah. there's an actual big god or something named Pan or something like that. Oh, yeah. A god named Pan. I don't, I don't know my mythology, but. Yeah, it's, he, he is. And, uh, of course, it'd take a few minutes to tell it, but. When you wake him up, this is where oh, you get oh, it is. Pan okay. means yeah, it's where you get the word panic from the god Pan, the false god Pan, and Demic is demographics, you know. And so they they're consulting gods every time they do this. They're consulting demons, in other words. Not real gods, but demons. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. but but I said this two years before. I said, I'd get up in the pulpit, Steve, and I'd say, Everything you know is about to change. Everything you know is about to change, and it'll never go back to the way it was. And I wouldn't know what I was talking about. And then April 30th, 2019, you know, you, you saw it on video where the Lord told me on live video. He said, and I said it, there's a sickness coming, an epidemic. Mm, yeah. And uh, all this, well, I'm telling you again, everything you know, is about to change. You're about to wow. see a change like you that we haven't seen before. There has to be a monumental thing happen. You, it can't mm -hmm. be let go. No, it no. cannot be let go. And uh, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves for for thinking about it. Yeah, for even trying to do that. Uh, I'm just looking to someone wrote me a note about confirmed via live cam. The reflecting pool is now refilled. I guess looks like they, I can't see it. looks like they started filling it about three days ago. <laughs> three days ago. Oh man. <laughs> what did you say happened three days ago? Didn't you say something happened three days ago? I did. I, I'm what? trying to remember what I said a minute ago. Something started but, three days ago. Yeah. About three days ago or something. But anyway, we see it coming, and uh, 2020 can't be let go. And right now, I think there's more on President Trump's mind than he's telling. I think so. And, and right now, all he has to do is turn and move toward his seat, and uh, he'll, he'll end up sitting in it. Yeah, yeah. And I he don't certainly think, will. I mean, I, th I, like th I like what Roger said. Um uh, we don't have but months Isn't or things so? are going to, yeah. Yeah. Or things are going to be, you know, almost irreversible. So, well, see if they can't do it in 2022, it'll have to be after 2030 before they can I try remember that. I remember that. So, but, the, but it's not pretty in between. So, all right. Well, God bless you, uh, Robin. I see robindbullock.com is on the screen so people know how to yeah, find you. That's, Thank that's you so much fun. for coming on with this. Thank you, my uh, brother. I appreciate it more than I can say. So have an amazing day. Let's see if we can see what tomorrow's show is. Oh, it's Cat, is it Stephen Cat, Cat and Steve tomorrow on Wednesday. Really interesting can't stuff. Can't go wrong with that, man. No, it cannot go. You <laughs> uh -uh. started to hold, the, you're wearing her. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Pen. It says, I don't do demons. That's for Yeah, Kat. yeah, Cat gave me that and this mantle. And oh, I've worn the mantle as well. Yeah,